All right, guys. So we've been looking at um, the headquarters position, and we've been looking at what uh, strategy and what kind of approach we can take from the headquarters position. And we've gone over two of the uh, main passes, okay, that we can work from the headquarters, two of the strongest passes, knee cut passes and folding passes. And we've seen how they're both interchangeable when we achieve the headquarters position where we've neutralized our trading partner's uh, uh, guard, where he doesn't really have much of a guard set. And we're able to start creating those openings to go for our passes. Okay, so just recapping here real quick. <clears throat> Once I get to this headquarters position, there's two directions that are uh, uh, favorable to go. I can go to my left and I can start looking to knee cut. I could go to my right and I can start looking to folding pass or smash pass. Okay, and these are both interchangeable. So when I start going one to one direction, let's say I see that my training partner's knees positioned a certain way and I wanna start going into a folding pass, okay? And when he feels me going for a folding pass, I can expect that hip change that's gonna op create openings for me to start going into my knee cut. Okay, so in that sense, these two passes are very uh, interchangeable. There is a situation though that makes it so that um, your training partner can limit your use of the knee cut, okay? And that's gonna be when he gets this grip on my pants, okay? So we, under we have to understand that there's so many variables in guard passing. There's so many positions and techniques that the bottom person can use and the top person can use. I wanna neutralize primarily his, the use of his legs, okay? I also wanna always be able to monitor if he controls sleeve grips. I need to be doing a good job at breaking these sleeve grips, okay? And we'll go, we'll go over uh, various grip breaks in a minute. But for right now, one of the situations that can make it difficult for me to work towards a knee cut pass is gonna be this sleeve, uh, is gonna be this uh, pant grip, okay? So, if he has his pant grip locked in tight, even without a De La Hiva hook, just him keeping this leg right over here, it can be difficult for me to start transitioning across towards that knee cut. He gets really good control of my leg. Even when I'm nice and low, if I get into this position, I can feel it's awkward. He controls me really well over here. So I have to look to break this grip, okay? If he was just to hold an ankle grip, super easy for me to just come here and break it. Super easy for me to turn my toes out kick out and free it, okay? The pant grip, it's a lot harder to break, okay? With just my hands. There is a technique though that um, is very good to break it, okay? And it's, and it's very good for creating uh, kind of a separation and for us to be able to go into to our passes, okay? So when he has this uh, pant grip, looks like I wanna go to the folding pass, okay? And I could go to a folding pass if he allows me to. If he starts using, keeping this knee in this direction, I could just open up and I could smash down in a folding pass and it's gonna be really hard for him to hold onto this grip once I really commit to the folding pass and it's gonna be kind of useless for him anyways. Okay, he's typically gonna wanna start trying to push me. Okay, so you can see that I put pressure on that grip when I cut my knee over it. That's exactly the technique that we're gonna use except it's not always gonna result in a folding pass. There's gonna be times where I may have the right position to be able to smash his legs together, but there's gonna be times that I won't. Okay, I won't be able to pressure, so keep your knee out. Yeah, I won't be able to pressure that knee this way. Okay, so what I have to do is, I'm gonna still do that same knee drop over the shin, except now I'm gonna keep my pant grip, and I'm not gonna to worry too much about smashing his knees together. Instead, from here, I just open my knee, I drop my knee on the floor, and when I drop it, I pivot. And once I pivot, now I know he's gonna be facing me here. And as soon as he's facing me without grips, now it's easy for me to get up onto my toes, push his knee down, start walking around to the opposite side, and then start establishing my pass from here. When he goes to turn into me from this position, we go hip to hip, same as before, and we follow him just as we have been using that hip to hip technique and walking at an angle onto our toes. Okay, so let's look at that again. It's the same knee drop 
over the shin that we use when we go to the folding pass. Okay, except now, I'm not gonna use it to folding pass. You could still do so if he's holding your pants, or if you're not able to, or you just don't want to, you can just hold the pants. Okay, you can hold right over here. You can hold a little bit higher up on the knee. Okay, make any grip on the pants where you're gonna be able to push his legs down. Now from here, I control right at his collar. I point my knee out, so my toes point out. I drop my knee to the floor, and as I drop, I pivot to break the grip. It's gonna be really hard for him to hold on to it when I commit to that. Now I come off my knees, I push down on this leg, and I place my head right in here. Once I push down, run to the opposite side, he turns into me, I go hip to hip, and I follow him on my toes in that position. Once he stops, I establish the pass. Okay, see it again from a different angle. Let's look at it from back. So once I'm here, I have the leg down. He has that pant grip nice and tight. I wanna to try to push the shin down as much as possible. Keep that collar grip knee to elbow, now I point my toes out, so my knee drops, pivot, push it down, jump to the side, and then I control him right over here. My elbow blocks his hip, my hip turns in, he goes to fight to shrimp away and fight me here, I hip to hip, and I pin his hips, and then eventually work up towards the head. 